Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my classroom. My name is Julia Tevis. In 2013, you're probably used to going to school for eight hours a day, using computers or maybe even iPads to do your schoolwork. But believe it or not, we didn't always have two-story schools or buses like the one you rode to get here today. As for me, I began my schooling probably much earlier than many of you, beginning at age four. I was so inspired by what I was learning that I wanted to pass my knowledge on to the next generation. So in 1825, I opened my very own all-girls school in Shelbyville called Science Hill. While you all may have hundreds of students in your school, I only had 18 to 20 students in the entire school. And unlike your school where you go home each night, I ran a boarding school where the girls stayed on the premises Monday through Friday, and I taught everything from French to music to drawing. I'd like to sing for you a song that I would have sung to my students when I was teaching, but first I'd like you to pick a partner. Okay, so I'm going to sing through the song first, and then after I've sung it, we'll sing it together, okay? All right. I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun's so hot I froze to death, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, do not cry for me. I come from Alabama with the banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, do not cry for me. I come from Alabama with the banjo on my knee. All right, I think we can sing it together. All right. I come from Alabama with the banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun's so hot and froze to death, Susanna, don't you cry. Civil War, and my students would sing it often. See, my school survived many years since it first opened in 1825, and we saw both happy and sad times. When the Civil War began in 1861, it was an even greater struggle than usual to keep the girls focused on their schoolwork. While you all may not pay tuition to attend your school, my girls did, and some could no longer afford tuition with the costs of the war. Most could scarcely concentrate. They were so worried about their fathers and brothers fighting away from home. But I had learned a thing or two in my 40 years of running a school, and my love of teaching young people kept us going. Now I'd like you to see what it was like when I was one of those young people learning in a time known as the frontier. While I go get your next teacher, I'd like you to complete an activity my students would have done. We're going to stay in the same pairs that we just had, and I'm going to pass around slates and slate pencils. Again, you need one per pair. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to draw nine dots. I'll show you in what uh, order you want to draw them. But you want to keep it pretty close to the center of the slate and keep it fairly small. So you're going to do three dots with uh, three rows of three dots each. So it'll be like this. Using only four lines. 
So once you've begun, you can't pick your slate pencil up from the slate until you've finished. If you mess up, you can just take your hand and erase it and draw it right back. And remember, the most important thing with this is to think outside the box. We want you to think critically for this. Can you use less than five? Uh, the goal is actually to use four. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll be back in a minute, and we'll see what everybody comes up with. Are there any questions? All right. I'll be back in a second. So what you do is, remember we said thinking outside the box. So what if you try this? You come up this way, and then you go across and keep going past the box you created. And then you come down like this, again, going past the, the square, and then you come back up like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you connected all nine dots using just four lines. It's just a drawing. Yeah. It's just a little bit of a drawing. Yeah, doesn't it? Exactly. Good job on that activity, everybody. So now, if you'll put those slates down, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about the frontier. My name is now Annie Weaver and I taught at the first school in Allen County, Kentucky, known as the Texas School. While your school may have 50 or more rooms, mine only had one room to teach first through eighth grade. At the front of the room sat my desk, and at the center we had a pot-bellied stove, since we didn't have central heating like you all do today. School began promptly at eight o'clock with roll call. Then we began by calling the first graders up to the front of the room to answer questions. Anything from spelling to arithmetic to grammar were potential topics, as I taught the students a little bit of everything. Fridays, though, were reserved for special events, such as spelling bees or fun games of hide and seek. Students were also welcome to use the library that was found in our one-room schoolhouse. There, they could find books such as Treasure Island or Aesop's Fables. I'd like to read a fable to you now, but make sure you pay attention because I'll be asking questions about it in a second. This is called The Huntsman and the Fisherman. A huntsman, returning with his dogs from the field, fell in by chance with a fisherman, bringing home a basket well laden with fish. The huntsman wished to have the fish, and their owner experienced an equal longing for the contents of the game bag. They quickly agreed to exchange the produce of their day's sport. Each was so well pleased with his bargain that they made, for some time, the same exchange day after day. A neighbor said to them, if you go on in this way, you will soon destroy, by frequent use, the pleasure of your exchange, and each will again wish to retain the fruits of his own sport. So, now that you've heard a fable, can anybody tell me what a fable is? Yes? Like a fake story? Get in there, yeah. Put it over here. A fable is a story in nature. A story in nature? It definitely can be, sure. Yeah. It, um, a fable is a story that teaches you a lesson. Exactly, yeah. Yay. So it definitely can take place in nature and have all those elements in it, but it does teach you a lesson. So then, can anybody tell me what a moral is? Yes? A moral is the lesson that you need to find out Exactly. So what was the moral of this fable? Mm -hmm. To not, like, if you keep on exchanging things, uh -huh. you will soon get tired of it and what, what you got, what you what you got back. Exactly. You know, have you ever heard the expression, the grass isn't always greener? Yeah. So they learned that maybe they should appreciate more of what they have instead of always wanting what somebody else has. Very good job, guys. I think you did an even better job answering those questions than my students did. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Civil War and the frontier, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you, guys.